Professor George Callas, Professor of Political Science and History at Miramar College in the United States. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. A lovely study I see behind you. Excellent. Good taste. Um, uh, let's uh, start in a way where we left off uh, when we spoke midweek. Um, here in Britain, if not the general public, though most of the general public have, but the entire political class, the entire uh, political apparatus, the entire media, uh, all the organs of the state, the football authorities, everybody uh, has gone Ukraine crazy. No one can quite explain why. When you ask them, have you ever worn uh, the colors of Yemen in solidarity with the millions who have been killed there by British and American weapons, by our closest ally in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, or any other of the conflicts that we've lived through uh, this last uh, 22 years or so, uh, no one can quite explain what it is that's special about Ukrainians. Is it the same, first of all, in the United States? Down on the street, I mean. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your show, and I uh, am happy to be with you and all your viewing listeners and audience. Um, the subject of our discussion is U.S. propaganda and domestic and, I should add, foreign policy. Uh, this is an old story. Uh, I think it's interesting what's happening in the U.K. is being echoed back and forth over the pond here. And basically, we're both being, essentially, we're being drowned in a sea of lies and hypocrisy today. And, of course, I want to echo back to our original interview meeting in my discussion here, because uh, what we have on our plate here is a long story, a, a very uh, sad story of U.S. national security state propaganda operations, ideological operations. It goes way back in history. What's happening in Ukraine is not new. So what I propose to do with our, our brief interview tonight is try to give a summary uh, based on the the topic of, of U.S. propaganda and its impact, not only on the domestic population, but also in the U.K., Europe, and globally. Because don't forget, U.S., national security uh, propaganda operations are a global system. It's not just here. But anyway, let, let me add something else. There's nothing new in this history of propaganda operations. And essentially, we have an ideological stranglehold uh, on the American public opinion with regard to domestic and foreign policy, which is the focus of this discussion. Now, let me begin also. Uh, Putin made a statement. Putin was absolutely right to call out the U.S. and Western propaganda mainstream media as an empire of lies. Uh, that's on the historical record, and which we'll briefly go through. But I'm going to go one better than Putin. I actually call it empire of propaganda. And uh, let me explain what I'm trying to say here in summary. The uh, U.S. National Security State War of Aggression, if you will, and there are many of them in history. Uh, the first casualty, of course, is the truth. Of course, being very cynical elites, the truth is to be manipulated. And I want to explain basically some of the techniques and components of how this system works. Uh, so, for example, the United States National Security State System and its associated corporate mainstream media uh, are using propaganda to hide the long historical record. Now, the historical record is key to breaking through the propaganda fog, if you will. And that's the, the point, is to censor it or to fragment it. Or as I tell my students, I say, look over here, don't look over here. Look over here, don't look over here. It's a sleight of hand trick. And, and it's a very old story. So there's a long historical record of U.S. overt and covert aggression in order to make this current crisis look like uh, the other guy is at fault instead of the real culprit, 
which is the U.S. national security state system and its NATO allies, which, in fact, as I see it, is the originating aggressor regime that provoked Russia's special operation intervention response, which I characterize as really a true humanitarian intervention, which I will explain and back up my claim a little bit later on. So what I claim is that this is a U.S.-NATO-Ukraine crisis, which goes as far back as the U.S.-NATO-backed uh, Euromaidan coup d'etat in 2014, along with the ensuing mass onslaught and slaughter against the Ukrainians and Ukrainian Russians. Don't forget, there are Ukrainians involved in this also, not just Russian speakers. Uh, and and the, the, the essentially war on terror from you. Kiev regime, of course, with the help of their, their neo-Nazi battalion allies, against the people of Donbass for the last eight long, bloody years. Now, well, here's what's important. This has been censored from the Western media. And that's the, the critical point we're trying to make here. So, so what we are seeing here, the key elements with regard to how effective U.S. propaganda and uh, domestic and foreign policy in the context of this current U.S. NATO uh, crisis, how, how it works. Well, there are key propaganda operation outcomes to this in the current crisis. And again, it's, they, it's off the shelf. They've used it over and over again. We've just shifted from one region of the world, uh, Southeast Asia, Latin America. Now we're uh, Middle East. Now we're in Europe again. Okay. Again, meaning what also happened with the the U.S. bombing of Yugoslavia. So the control of the message is key. So control of the message is how we control the, all the issues surrounding the current crisis that is presented to the American people in order to gain a sympathetic consensus and support for U.S. foreign policy that is connected to domestic policy uh, via kind of a complex of institutions, for example, the military industrial uh, intelligence, academic policy making, think tank complexes supported by uh, the corporate mainstream media, which essentially is is the is the broadcast medium, the bullhorn, if you will. Now, what is U.S. domestic policy, and how is it related or correlated with U.S. foreign and national security policies? Well, the classic answer is simple: to keep Americans uninformed through disinformation, while also garnering their uninformed support for another U.S.-made foreign crisis. And I know that sounds kind of contradictory, and that's the whole point. It is an internal contradiction, because the theory is, well, you inform the public, they can make considered decisions, but in fact, using disinformation, you literally systematically uninform, or if you want to call it de-inform them of what's happening. So this is essentially a distraction propaganda maneuver to blame Russia for the ongoing domestic policy problems. So let's take, for example, what's happening here in the United States. Uh, so as we know from recent uh, news reports, uh, Biden's ratings are gradually tanking and because he has failed to actively and effectively support comprehensive uh, domestic policies, for example, like uh, national public health system or free public education system, basically starting from the community college, which uh, essentially he blocked for funding, uh, failed to cancel the massive uh, national student debt, which is skyrocketed into the trillions of dollars, and also failed to effectively tackle the ongoing inflation, which predates the, in, uh, the invasion. In fact, the inflation is systemically and historically connected to uh, the 2008 uh, great capitalist financial crash, which we're still suffering them. Okay, so this has part and parcel of accumulated over time uh, the problems of uh, domestic policy in the United States. Now, how does that connect uh, with foreign policy? Well, of course, we have midterm elections coming up uh, on the horizon, and in the context of this, we have falling ratings. So, again, look over here. Don't look over here. So, yeah, that, but Professor, that, that's uh, in a way the most interesting thing because 
that doesn't seem to be working. There he is, uh, prancing around, uh, if he can prance, uh, on the European stage, playing the world leader, uh, galvanizing people for the possibility of uh, hot war beyond the borders of Ukraine. But his numbers are still falling. How do you account for that? Well, I think the idea is that now we have global information, alternative forms of information, which I want to also include in my analysis here, where people are saying that we don't buy it anymore. He, his rates are falling because it's a crisis of legitimacy, which actually has been kind of ongoing for a long time uh, within the, uh, the political institutions here. Uh, people are becoming critically aware that kind of the gig is up. They're understanding how the mass media, corporate mass media works. And now we have the, the, the social media giants, of course, which all kind of interconnect and collaborate. Uh, so what I think what the president is doing is this look over here, over here strategy is not working because people are doing this. They're taking all this information and, of course, they're bringing it together and starting to say, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. Why is Ukraine right now uh, on the top of the list of issues? So back to propaganda. How does it work? You have to manipulate uh, as much as possible. And I feel that the propaganda mileage are getting out of this is going to fail. It's not going to last. Very interesting. Long. Look, we're going to have to leave it there, Professor Callas. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. I hope you'll do so again.